Welcome, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Business Show. What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up, Everyone guys? is well, safe, and mm. I haven't. Um, sure, it's been raining a lot, eh? It looks like a flood here at my place. <laughs> at least the bottle stores open, so that's yeah. good yeah. How's everyone doing? Um, how are you feeling? How's the emotional state? Who's part of the boot camp? Uh, pop in there, uh, that is going. Um, just had an amazing coaching session before we uh, got into the school now. And we we're talking about strategy. What's your strategy for 2021 aligning with your personal vision? Um, so that was the topic that we spoke about, and I think that's a cool topic for everyone. Is the good dog that's going off like that? Was. <laughs> Um, so how is your strategy aligning with your personal vision? Now, the key thing for that is what is your personal vision? So if you already know, just pop in the comments, my personal vision for 2021 is this. And if your personal vision is a specific thing, like I want to increase my income or I want to have more flexibility or I want to travel more, what is your vision for yourself? And if you don't find that, you're going to end up next year, January 2020, in exactly the same place that you are now. So you need to define that vision and decide where is it that you're going to. And then how is your business or your whatever aligning with that vision? So how are you going to structure it and change it so that you can achieve your vision for yourself? Something so, which fits into that, Eugene, is something which you said to me the other day. It's people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. If you don't know what you want, you're not going to get it. I, I, I sometimes get this feeling people sit at home and they, uh, they, 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 um, they say, I want to retire on this island and I want all this money and all this freedom and stuff like that. But I don't actually take the time to go and sit and write down exactly how they're actually going to get there. And then when they get there, they're kind of surprised and said, but I had this vision for myself and my family and, and so forth. And you know, if you don't plan, you're not going to get there. That is the reality. And it's something which I realize more and more often. Um, you know, even if, even if you take your own family, I mean, you guys need to sit and chat about it. Where do you guys as a family want to be? It's so important. We kind of get stuck in our business things and, um, you know, our partners are sick and tired of listening to our stuff. But at the end of the day, this is... <laughs> This is part of of your. This is part of your life. You need to go and sit and have those discussions and yeah, write it down, create a vision board. Um, yeah. What is your vision? How are you going to achieve it? Very, very important. Yeah, I mean, Eugene, we speak about it. We ask each other these questions, and you know, it's so difficult. You ask mm -hmm. someone that question, they can't tell you that, um, and it's simply because we've not taken ten minutes to sit and think about it. How scary I is that? I want to share something else that I mentioned on the bootcamp as well. Um, that we are talking about our mantra. How to get yourself into a specific state. Um, so really, I still do his mantra. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Eugene, could you, if you don't mind, if I can put you on the spot, would you just please share with everyone yours? I mean, you've shared it with me, if you don't mind. <laughs> I can feel the hojas in my chest. <laughs> yeah, I can. So um, my mantra, the goal for this is every time myself and Billy open up a conversation, in the morning I want to set in the intention for that day. And we need to change our state. If you're in a different state, different frame of mind, if you think you're motivated, powerful, etc., the execution level just increases next level. Where if you're sitting in a state and think, oh, it's COVID again, and, the bottle stores are closed and it's Friday and I forgot to buy yesterday and I don't have anything for the weekend and, and, and that's your state that you're going to be in. So my mantra to change my state or to set my state for that particular day is that I'm an exceptional businessman. I inspire every single person I meet every single day. I'm busy making an impact in the world and it's my duty to live to my fullest potential. I give myself the permission to become the person I was born to be. Nice, like it. My mantra for myself, and that comes into what do I want to achieve? What is it that I want to achieve? 
what's the vision for myself? My vision is to be inspired and to be inspiring. So I want to inspire other people. To inspire other people, I need to be inspired myself. So what is the stuff that inspires me? And that is teaching, learning, inspiring other people. And then I give myself the permission to do that. Because we're very egotistical and we're so afraid of what other people are going to think. I'm posting quite a bit of stuff on Instagram and my personal Facebook page now. And that was a massive hurdle to overcome. Because you think, what are people going to think? And what if they don't like this? And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And we kind of almost get stuck in our own way. And we are the obstacle for our own success. So I'm using this mantra to give myself the permission to become the person that I want to be. I give myself the permission to execute. I give myself the permission to live the life that I know I'm supposed to live. Yeah, it's so cool. And, you know, everyone that's uh, on the show today, take some time, go write down yours and maybe start by just sharing it with your partner. Um, you know, if you feel comfortable for the guys that's uh, on our mastermind group and bootcamp, please go ahead and share it. But Eugene, without further ado, yeah. tell us a bit more about today's. Yeah, before we do, Sonia, just check your messages are going through to private, not to public. Um, so welcome everyone, uh, Sonia, Vera, Louis, everyone else that's joined on the call. Um, and joining our show, we can't do the show without you guys. So thank you for pitching up. Thank you for supporting us. And thank you for being part of the business show. And hopefully each week you learn something and each week you can move forward. So we're trying to make it as entertaining as possible. It's also here for you to learn something. Um, so we're trying to teach in a fun way. And that's the purpose of the business show. So let's get into today's subject. So today we are speaking to David Henderson. So it's our first guest that we're having on for a second time. So it's our first giant that's come back for a second interview. And the biggest reason for that is we had done a lot of inquiries over the last month or two about ebook publishing. How do you use an uh, ebook to build your brand? And especially if you're in the digital marketing space, how do you use an ebook to get it out there to create credibility for yourself? So we just had to get Dave back and say, Dave, <laughs> we need you a second time, buddy. <laughs> Come back and help us uh, break this myths and help us to help ourselves and to help our viewers to uh, to execute. Because that's a big thing is we don't have to be great to start, but we have to start to be great. Yep. And the thing that we stops us from being great or starting is this big elephant that we make up in our head of how difficult this is going to be and I can't do it and I don't know the tech and, 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 and. So the purpose of this is to show you how easy it is so that you can actually go out and do it. So um, Billy, I think you can message Dave and tell him you can jump up on the call. And then we well, can start. And if, and if I can just add something there, you know, um, like you mentioned, we, we, um, we don't get to do things because we're trying to do this big, huge thing and we really don't have to do that. You just have to really just start. And that's our philosophy. I um, mean, we often advertise products that we've actually haven't got in stock just to test it. Um, you know, that's the type of mindset which you as an entrepreneur need to start um, uh, developing. Um, and yeah, I, I can imagine... I'm not an author. I've never written a book. I have written books, but it's like seven page ebooks, which I give out to <laughs> lead magnets, which is not what yeah. we're talking about today. These are proper books. And uh, yeah, David and his team, they do it all the time. They do it very often. And I think, Eugene, what's very important about this topic today is if you want to become an influencer or an a, a influencer in your specific niche or market, it is something which you're going to have to get comfortable with. And one of those things is personal brand. And, and these ebooks tie in so well with, um, with a personal brand. And I, most, and I uh, often see these guys actually, um, you know, that's, that's where the things start. People read this book and I just want to learn more about you. So, yeah, without further ado, Eugene. Also, the credibility that gets created when you say that I'm a published author. So before we get started, I just want to say to Dave that he hasn't kept me accountable. He's supposed to help me write my book. Three years <laughs> in the week, he must have never had a book. <laughs> Dave, what's up, man? Hey, guys. Good to be back on the show. Yeah. What's up? What's up? 
Cape Town, man. Cape Town, Cape Town. It's just uh, another happy day, unfortunately. <laughs> so before we get started, Dave, just for the guys that missed the previous show, maybe just give a quick introduction of David Anderson and my ebook. So on our previous chat, we basically had a quick uh, overview of the timeline where I, uh, I was working. I was uh, frustrated. I was working for other people. Uh, unhappy, but kind of unsure of what to do, which direction to go in. Uh, no entrepreneurial background whatsoever. My folks were uh, government workers through and through. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, stumbling into business by accident and uh, the kind of journey since then, you know, the journey of, of choosing not to just be a freelancer, but choosing to actually grow something that will outlast me. Uh, growing an asset that can be sold and kind of the steps needed to make that happen. Yeah. No, that's cool. awesome. And ebook, my ebook, what is that about? So uh, the business of my ebook was, was created and shaped to, uh, to answer one problem. And that is uh, what options do a frust does a frustrated author have? Um, authors are currently quite a, an underserviced um, community, uh, not just in South Africa, but worldwide. So with the explosion of self-publishing, um, authors are kind of, um, there's a, a huge amount of choice with not a massive amount of explanation as to what's going to suit you best to get your book out into the world. And so our job is just to make the author's choices easier. So we're a, a single business that houses multiple experts and each expert is designed to guide an author through a particular journey, whether it's cover, um, you know, whether it's a, it's a, it's a typeset for print uh, or an ebook. And so, yeah, what we leave behind is we leave behind happy authors with books that have been published online uh, to millions of readers. Wow. It's very amazing. Cool. Hey? Sitting in South Africa and selling your stuff worldwide. So well, that's cool. a cool thing to, um, are you framed that is, are we all happy authors? <laughs> it's it's yeah. really yeah, it's, 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 it's too easy to get lost inside a business, you know, focusing on a product. I make the best X. But um, the niche in South Africa uh, and actually further than South Africa is, is focusing on great service. So it's um, similar to Tony Shea um, from Zappos where the guy didn't, you know, give too much of a damn about shoes, but he gave a damn about customer service. And that almost applies to any niche in the country where um, you could, you know, you could pick any frustration. And if you're going to build a, and shape a business that services the hell out of a frustrated bunch of people, uh, it's a great foundation for a business. Yeah. Super. That's a good thing, guys. Uh, Tony Shea, Delivering Happiness. If you want to read a book about customer service, really cool book. Really Go for it. Cool. Cool. Yes, yeah, so David, well, man. <laughs> wow. So, um, I feel like so, I've stepped so into David, the middle of something going on here. <laughs> so, David, it's, it's been a year, almost a year since you've last appeared in the business show, and we've had quite a uh, rough ride in terms of business in South Africa and worldwide. Um, Tell us a bit, uh, uh, how, how has your business evolved over this last year? So to, to frame my feedback, um, so, so Corona happened obviously kind of Feb, March last year. It became, you know, it, 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 it appeared on our radar. Um, coincidentally, the My eBook business has had its best year ever. Wow. So year to date, uh, ending Feb this year, we've had our highest turnover, highest net profit, most amounts of people helped, which is uh, probably my most important measure. Uh, how many happy customers we've left behind. And I think the number's around 68 customers this year. Sure. Um, where we've been able to help them get their, you know, their books uh, published. And so, yeah, essentially being, I don't think I've had a year where I've been as grateful to be doing what I've been doing, how I've been doing it as I did during lockdown. I think, I think it's, it's kind of been easy to get a bit lost, you know, with this, with the hustle and bustle of what we do. You know, I think it's so easy to kind of um, focus on, you know, I think if you had a cushy corporate job, you got a, you know, a nice salary and things like that. But I think lockdown proved that that's, it's always been a bit of an illusion. But I, I think during lockdown, so many other people came to that realization that that job 
uh, working for someone else was just that. You know, it was something that you had, but not necessarily guaranteed. So many people lost jobs. And um, it was a moment I actually was able to look up and go, damn, I mean, I love what I do, but damn, this is actually the, the perfect time to be doing digital. And so, uh, although personally it was uh, super taxing, like, uh, you know, the, the drain of running a business, you know, is, 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 is big at the best of times. But during lockdown, obviously for everyone, it became, you know, hugely intense. But I think being digital really, really, um, you know, I think during lockdown showed its, its, its power, its potential. I want to ask something on the Dave. So, for everyone else that doesn't know, we met what probably six, seven years ago at a business. Twenty fourteen, yeah. Twenty fourteen, yes, seven I years ago. Like a, I sound like a girlfriend now. It's like, yeah, it was it was November twenty fourteen, <laughs> and I looked across, I looked across the room and I saw you, and I was like, damn. <laughs> I understand why you say girlfriend, you know, Eugene sometimes go on like a girl, you know. <laughs> oh, thank God, it's not just me saying that. <laughs> so we've always placed a high importance on the people that you spend your time with, who are you connecting with, how they influence you, etc., cetera, et cetera. <laughs> During the lockdown process or period and this loss of connection with people, that affected me quite badly. Um, not having that interaction, but it made it even more um, clear, more, um, I don't know what the right word is there, of who we should be spending our time with. How is that at all influenced you during this process? Or during yeah, this I mean, process? Just to kick things out, I can say it was a, it was a damn, sorry, is, is swearing allowed on this show? <laughs> damn, yeah. it's well, he's not <laughs> dirtier than that. <laughs> but, uh, Save you, Eugene. Time. Lockdown was tough, man. I think I think lockdown on a personal level, you know, even though the wheels didn't fall off our business, um, and I'm extremely grateful about that. I think, you know, on a personal level, having people around you going through that amount of trauma, whether it was on a business side or a personal side, it taxes you no matter what. Like, if you're lucky enough that nothing bad happened, like I've got no doubt that bad stuff was happening to people around you. And if you're a good friend, that means that you were being the support, you know, for them. And so nobody left, you know, and it's obviously still on, ongoing, but nobody's left this thing unscathed, you know, in some way, shape or form. Yep. So, so yeah, I think I'm lucky that a few of the people in my close proximity also have digital businesses or are in charge of their businesses. And so although, um, you know, although it's been isolated, luckily I've had people around me going through something similar on some level. So... Uh, I think the only thing I could do uh, to easily alleviate a bit of the frustration and isolation was I, I actually upped, I upped the amount of customer touch points I had in our processes because okay. no customer really gets you know, frustrated by over communication. You know, it's, it's customers um, tend to flip the other way where if you don't touch them enough, it sounds mm -hmm. dirty, but if you don't touch them enough, they, uh, they get a bit uh, frustrated. So all I did was I made so many more phone calls to people than I did before, because I think they appreciated the personal touch, and I kind of got to uh, top up a little bit, you know, from those conversations as well. So it was, it was um, a kind of silly hack just to keep myself, you know, connecting to people, even if it was digitally. Um, I, I instituted a new process where, for example, I um, any new customer who joined us for one of our high level author packages, uh, they got a phone call. Uh, sorry, not a phone call, a Skype or a Zoom. Where if you buy package X and above, um, part of that is now going to include an hour or two coaching session where I chat with you, I connect with you uh, beyond the book and looking at you as a business. Because obviously, writing the book, funny enough, is actually one of the, the easier challenges when it comes to uh, the book being out there. How do you get people yep. to find it? And so yep. authors um, in South Africa especially are unprepared uh, to wear the marketing cap. And so that's the beauty of these initial consultations was I said, cool, your book's going to be in good hands. Let's put it one side. What are you going to do to you know, help people you know, find out about this book? What platforms do you have? What platforms do you like using? And so, yeah, basically, aside from, um, aside from the financial side, and, for example, we upped our deposits you know, uh, required to cater for the fear of uh, cash flow, um, on the personal side, just making sure that we allowed more time to connect with our customers uh, during the publishing process as well. Cool. And Eugene, it ties in so much with what we discussed in our bootcamp this week. It's just 
we ourselves have realized we 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 are missing some touch points and by just the, um, um, creating those additional touch points, just how much value that um, creates uh, for your potential client. Yeah, so, yeah I really think that it makes a difference if you touch your clients more. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it would be so better if you would say that without smiling. Or very, very <laughs> like, uh, team, can we just rather talk about ebooks, please, man? <laughs> <laughs> so, David, I've got a... my happiness will increase. If... If the people that I'm buying from touch me, <laughs> <laughs> what are they buying from you exactly? Uh, sure, I I I ask forgiveness for my co-presenters. <laughs> uh, David, is it to jump into the ebooks and the branding? How can you use an ebook to brand yourself? So, so an ebook is a product, um, first and foremost. So, although it's a it's a collection of text of writing um, it gets the same treatment you would treat any other product entering the market in terms of how it looks you know in terms of how it's packaged uh, in terms of its coloring you know in terms of its its uh, its its descriptions so uh, a huge amount of effort goes first and foremost into making sure you got the best book possible because no marketing makes a difference if you've cut corners um, so so I've got authors uh, I've helped recently and over the years who love to uh, get their books together off fiverr.com and uh, the the problem with that is you get what you pay for and so for those authors who come to me and say great well i got this book and i got this cover for super cheap and the editing was super cheap um let's now market this book i, I actually tend to decline those authors because you're taking it on a challenge you'll never win you know to to get someone excited about reading your book where you can see the cover was put together by a, a drunk uh, sort of a uh, high schooler. Um, it's, 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 it's a waste of cash. It's absolutely a waste of money. So the first marketing step is actually do the production properly. Um, so, so authors who then have a following do very well when a book launches as well. So those authors who have a platform where they've been cultivating some form of engagement with uh, potential readers. Those are authors who typically have very good sales results in the first week or two of, of book release as well. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of small things like that that I, I check up on with the author to make sure uh, the launch goes you know as well as possible. Dave, you mentioned um, you see that it um, authors with the following um, gets very good results. Um, when you guys do those consultations before the launch, do you act, yeah. do you actually uh, consult with these authors and give them some guidance as to how they can go about um, in acquiring these um, uh, this audience and so forth? Yeah, yeah. So, so so part of the conversation is things to do, kind of giving the author homework and saying, okay, you've told okay. me kind of what platforms you like. You've told me kind of you know, where you like to spend your time online, here's what you should go do to start cultivating readers. You know, uh, it's great that an author says, I, I've spoken to 20 people and everyone wants to buy the book. Good. Go get, go get those people, go get the email addresses so that we can start building a bit of an email conversation with them. Um, the second part of our conversations actually uh, where I bring cold water to the author because um, authors too often write books expecting magic to happen. You know, expecting because it's an ebook, because you're going into Amazon, that you you kind of close your eyes and hope and sales happen. And so the other part of our conversations is me going, listen, here's kind of what's going to happen if you don't do anything. Here's what to expect. Because a lot of authors, uh, not many authors come to me with a plan. Most authors think writing the book is the plan. The plan is actually what happens once the book is released. And so I bring that reality check to an author going, listen, if you have no marketing plan whatsoever... Here's what's going to happen. Uh, we can, you know, we can chat more about building an audience and, you know, getting potential readers together, um, and that's going to make you, um, you know, sell better. But if you don't, here's kind of what to expect because um, there's nothing worse than an author who's expecting, you know, on, on, on the day the book goes up or goes live, you know, a, a flood of readers to come through and it doesn't happen. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely I want to avoid that situation. Dave, we've got a few questions on the Amazon side of things. Um, one of the guys was saying, that, or the ladies are saying, she's got 10 books. Um, I just want to go back to it. Fiction. Um, yeah. That's been selling. And we've got some questions about the percentage of royalties on Amazon. Um, and then for South Africans being able to publish on Amazon. 
just yeah. maybe walk us through the process. What what is how does Amazon work? How does the royalties work? How do you publish your ebook on Amazon? Okay. So so the first thing is to know a South African author, African author, uh, can publish on Amazon. That's the first thing. So so a lot of people don't know it's an option. It is absolutely an option. It's uh yeah, I think I think a lot of people uh, from South Africa in particular have a beef with Amazon. They don't like Amazon. They think it's a bully. So, and they are, they aren't necessarily wrong, but it's kind of stupid to cut off your nose to spite your face and avoid Amazon just because you know of, of how they run their you know their business. So um, the first option or the first step is to know that it is viable, and it's viable not just for English authors, but Afrikaans authors as well. You guys know Bartis. Oh, yes, um, Bartis. And Bartis <laughs> is now an Afrikaans <laughs> author on Amazon. So really can also write a book now. <laughs> <laughs> My Willie can write a book. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if, yeah, firstly, it's an option. Secondly, the the ebook you're going to create, it, it's depending on the sort of book you're putting together, an ebook might need special attention because if your book is mostly text, the process will be fairly smooth and fairly quick. If your book is quite fancy, let's take the opposite end and go um, children's books. So children's books and, and anything super visual like a cookbook as well is absolutely um, an option for an ebook, but it needs a lot of cuddling from an ebook team to get there. So you can, if you're tech savvy, you're touching your customers and cuddling and right, you're trying to sell a, tell them something. Yeah, is just like in your life. Just wait, 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 wait. wait. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, a mascot for the company as well. Meet, meet Max. Aww. He's cute. Huh? <laughs> How's it, Max? A little author puppy. Um, so, so, so essentially, yeah, the the tone we brand our business with. You're going to hear a lot of words like, uh, you know, we your ebook pops out the oven. You, you know, giving the author a cuddle, stuff like that, because that's our brand. Our brand. If you think about our customer, our customer is a frustrated author who's too busy to focus on this kind of thing. So our branding is deliberately um, softer. Our wording and our text on our websites and our, our documentation is all very reassuring. Hey, don't stress. We're going to help you get through this. And that's exactly why I use some of those softer words, because that's what our customers are feeling at the time. They want that uh, helping hand through the process. And so a huge amount of uh, time goes into me crafting copy uh, for our documentation that sounds reassuring because that's you know what's going to make an author who's frustrated feel better. So, yeah. In terms of the royalties and stuff, how does that work? So the simple answer here is an author can earn up to seventy percent on an ebook sale. Okay. So there are a bunch of uh, asterisks, a bunch of caveats or fine prints. Yeah. yeah. But. Uh, Simplification, oversimplification is you can earn up to 70% off an ebook you sell from Amazon. And you can earn up to 60% of your paperback list price minus the cost uh, it takes to, uh, for Amazon to actually print the book as well. So, um, if so you think about it, yeah. say that again. So, ebook, your royalties can be quite a bit higher quite a bit higher. So 70% and there's no cost of production. So once your ebook is, is created, yeah. it sells as many times as, as you can sell it or, or people you know buy it. Uh, whereas obviously the, the paperback gets printed, but the beauty of the paperback process is Amazon prints it, Amazon ships it, the reader is paying yes. for everything. So the author, like Bertus, if someone orders a copy of his book, he doesn't have to lift a finger. He sits at home, his book sells off Amazon, and uh, all he has to do is send as many people as possible to the bookshop. Cool. David, tell me, so now once your ebook or your paperback is listed on Amazon, just like Facebook, this is also just an online marketplace. Is there actually a way that you can do paid advertising on the Amazon platform or not? Yeah. Yeah. So Amazon, if you think about how Facebook advertises within the Facebook ecosystem, if you think about how Google advertises within the Google ecosystem, Amazon introduced about a year or two back, probably two years back, um, Amazon AdWords, for argument's sake. So, so essentially, you pay Amazon an allowance. It spends the allowance similar to Google AdWords, where you can say uh, the frequency, how quickly it must spend your money. Um, you can target either a, a target uh, a book. You can say, listen, anyone who browses Harry Potter, I want them to see my book as well. You can decide how much money you want to spend uh, per click. 
And so, yeah, Amazon allows an author to pay it money to uh, give it prominence within the Amazon shop. Absolutely. Is it worthwhile? Experimenting is worthwhile. Um, there is no, it, it, it's, it's similar to Google. Like, is Google worth it for your business? I don't know. It depends on your customers. It depends how good your advertising is. You know, I think yeah. anything done badly is going to suck. I think Amazon, if you focus on some good copy, some good advertising and uh, targeting. So I think you're allowed to do A-B testing within Amazon as well. Um, yeah, it can, I, I've seen some good results from the Amazon AdWords as well. Okay. I think because they've got so much data, it would be really effective advertising. But, I mean, Eugene, it's the same as we and we talk about Facebook advertising. You've got, like, 10 Facebook um, marketers. Two of them actually get results, and the other eight just stuffs around and charge people money to do it. So, yeah. So, yeah. Dave, is there any other marketing strategies besides um, helping to build an audience and stuff that you guys use for these guys? I mean, the first advice I can I can give any author is uh, you know use my ebook. Yeah, yeah there you've got it. We've got authors uh, yeah. on here. Vera, right? get in touch with Dave. The cool thing with my business, on a serious note, is I don't sell. I don't sell whatsoever. I I, I don't know if I've ever cold called a customer a day in my life, and the business has been going for eight years. So so what we do for for those viewers of yours is is we rely on content marketing is it viewers or listeners sorry is it uh is it going to be video sorry yeah it's video it's, okay, it's, a, it's a good thing I it. With um so that I, I rely almost solely on content marketing meaning i put a lot of content out there free of charge uh, i make sure the content has breadcrumbs that brings people back to our website and i make sure the website's shaped well to convert people from a visitor to a, uh, a customer we are able to help. Completely so, off topic. Is it? What, completely off topic. What tool do you use to, to, mon to, um, to see where does all your traffic come from? So I haven't touched it recently, but Google, Google Search Console. Cool. Thanks. Sorry, continue. Yeah. No, no, that's cool. So, so, so basically, um, using my new WordPress website, I've plugged in Yoast to the back end. I've configured Yoast. I've submitted my site to the search engines of Bing and um, Google. Uh, people forget Bing, but a lot of older customers still use it because it comes you know, pre-installed with, with, uh, okay. with Microsoft. I've submitted sitemaps to both search engines, dynamic sitemaps, so that uh, the websites or sorry, the search engines know how my website looks as well. And um, I've then, I've configured very specifically each page so that it, ha it has the exact title and meta description it should have. So that when people see your page in search results, um, it looks exactly as it should. You know, it, it has the right text and the right name. And actually in the background uh, behind uh, my computer screen, I'm actually busy uh, marking up my, my uh, FAQ page so that Google's able to recognize my page has an FAQ schema and pull the, the frequently asked questions through to the search result page as well. So that when people okay. see the My eBook page, um, it's going to have live FAQ links they can click on so that I actually get more real estate in the search result page. So it's so a small thing. That's the dot online one, my ebook dot online, huh? And my ebook dot online. So essentially, um, I do a lot of back end work aside from the content marketing, which brings people to me. I spend a lot of time shaping their experience um, so that, um, so that yeah, uh, once they find us, it's easy to figure out what we want them to do. And I think uh, uh, just on that note, again, I, I paid another website uh, yesterday around $250 uh, just to put a link to our site on their site. It's a big right. international platform that I know if Google sees them link to us, uh, we're going to get an SEO boost because of that. So there's a huge amount of effort into uh, sort of renting paid real estate to point people to my website, uh, not just for the people who actually click on the link, but because Google likes it when you do that. If it sees a lot of backlinks to your website from reputable sources, uh, it bumps you higher the search engine uh, results as well. Mm. Cool. Just quickly, George um, suggested places to market the ebooks. Just check that beginning of the... Um, we spoke a bit about that, so we're going to repeat that. But it's basically your followers, and then um, you know, get a good following. Contact Dave from my ebook. That some of the services they um, 
offer. And then Amazon, there's a lot of stuff that you can do on Amazon. And then you can also promote it to your own website. So have your own website and then run ads to your own website. Dave, I just want to ask, you mentioned earlier about the just going on to Fiverr and getting this backyard drunken um, teenager to do your cover. How important oh, oh. is cover? <laughs> I can just imagine how that would turn out get to do your cover design. <laughs> really crappy. <laughs> Is that a horse? Oh, I drew a horse. I will, I will do it in Excel. <laughs> I'm an accountant. I'll do it in Excel. So how important is that cover for your book? Would you buy a book that has a shitty cover? No. That's no. it. <laughs> That's exactly That's it. it. Simple as um, that. The, the author... So I have an author who recently commissioned covers of Fiverr. And... Um, it's very hard for, for, I mean, you guys know this from being in business as well, but like, it's hard to give advice when you provide this, you know, the solution, because obviously you're biased, you know, obviously the, the customer can look at you and go, yeah, of course you're saying it shit because you want to sell me another one. Um, but basically the cover that this author commissioned through Fiverr, um, it looked up, it looked absolutely terrible. Now Fiverr is not a bad thing if you know exactly what you want. If you have a very good idea of, of what you want to see on the end yep. results, you can gamble. Because if we think about it, even if you spend, you know, $10, $15 and you get a shitty result from one person, you can then hire someone else and go, you know what, fuck it, that's $15. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put it one side. I'll pay some more. That's okay. Because you're probably still paying uh, so much lower than you would have paid from a professional, you know, in, in South Africa. Um, whereas what you're paying for when you pay someone, for example, like our business, is you're paying for continuous support because a lot of people go, listen, I don't know exactly what I want. I'm kind of busy. I don't want to have to focus. I, you know, I could mm -hmm. learn this, but I don't really want to. And so what you lose with Fiverr is if they do a good job the first time, great, you're okay. If they do a shit job, you're screwed because you, you're probably chatting with some guy in the Philippines or India who doesn't speak English properly. And how the hell are you going to try to communicate with them if they don't even understand exactly what you're saying? And they want to focus on the other 100 guys waiting in the queue. So, so it's a gamble. And if you know exactly what you want, maybe it's worth it. But if you know that you need a bit of a, a guiding hand, then you, uh, that guiding hand, unfortunately, will cost a little extra. And it really gets back to that point of you pay what you get. I mean, I've used Fiverr freaking lots of times. And really, uh, maybe one out of 10 times you eat the mark. The rest of the times, these guys don't even understand what's the color blue. You know, this thing comes out pink, and it's just not worth it. At the time, you're wasting pics on Facebook and stuff where they, the client's expectation, and then it's this house, and then um, the reality with his budget, and it's this bricks that's lying skew, and the whole thing's leaning. And yeah. so, um, the more yeah. you want, and the more all the authors holding you want, the more expensive it gets. Authors are no different. Like a lot of people who knock on your door and want to do business will never be your customers. And what's kind of fun being in business for a bit longer is, is you start to recognize who those people are. You know, I call it red flags. As you're chatting with someone, they're going to say certain things that really, really flag and you go, okay, you're probably not a customer of mine. No, and it's so, these fire kickers. Yeah. And, and so putting as much not as much, but putting some some information on the website to take care of people like that or in your documentation is not a bad idea as well. So the debate of should I put pricing on my website? I struggled a long time. You know, should I put the pricing because I'm such a good you know um, uh, negotiator that if I chat with someone, I'll definitely get a good deal. You know, I'll, I'll get them to join us. But then the problem is 50% of your calls are wasted with people who never want to spend whatever you're going to charge. We're putting a little bit of a barrier price, so a starting from price, for example, uh, mm -hmm. on your documentation, your emails, your website, for example, it automatically yeah. discounts a whole chunk of people, meaning whoever does make it to you, and yeah, it will be less people, are more serious people, which I think is kind of awesome. Yeah, you know, you'd rather have fewer people that serious customers than having loads of people come through, but none of them purchase your product. Um, yeah. Then Chantal just sent a private message to say that can a um, paperback be published to an ebook or converted to an ebook. Why is she sending you a private message and not me? <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty. Damn it. That is not. <laughs> uh, sorry, I completely lost that question. Um, can it can be converted, converted to an ebook? 
Okay, so there's two answers here. Um, if you still have the files used to make the books PDF, yes. So if you have, for example, the Word documents or the Adobe InDesign files that were used to create your print ready PDF, absolutely. What happens with some authors is um, the book's 20 years old, the printer's gone out of business, they've lost their computer, and so they don't have, um, they don't have the original soft copy files, a PDF, for example. Um, we then have to put it through an OCR scanning process where we essentially cut the book spine off, we put the pages under a fancy printer that are able to scan, but actually recognize every single character at the same time. And okay. so for authors with older books or books out of print, they, they still want to go the ebook route. Uh, we put them through the OCR process to get an editable uh, document out the other side to then start the ebook. Um, yeah. Okay. And then George is saying um, the title is probably quite important as well. Title is hugely important. So it's, a, a title needs to make sense to the reader, but a title is also searchable online. So you want to have a title that's you know catchy and it makes sense. And then you also want to make use of the real estate offered in the subtitle. Because um, a subtitle is meant to explain or clarify the book's content. And this does, it does depend on whether you're doing fiction or nonfiction. Obviously, I'm going to assume most people are doing nonfiction. That tends to be the South, the South African norm. So, so title and, and subtitle are hugely important, as well as uh, a series title. So Amazon gives you the power of a, of a third title, which is the, the series title. And every okay. single one of those fields, title, subtitle, series title, are searchable within Amazon, meaning that your, your title can be simple, catchy, sexy, and then use the subtitle to clarify to people, be obvious. This book is a, a nonfiction thriller, storybook, historical fiction, mm. whatever the case might be. And then if possible, use the series field um, because it's great to write more than one book, even if it's a bit of a shorter one, because then you can start having fun with your product funnels. Cool. Dave, we're almost out of time. I've got a one question. Is there any other platforms apart from Amazon where guys can publish their books? Well, or do you I recommend... I want to. I want to give more, but to 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 hear more, you're gonna have to pay for my upgraded experience package. <laughs> um, so, so you take on. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so so yeah, the, there's a lot of shops out there. The the only shop you should really pay attention to. Firstly, don't pay attention necessarily to anything purely South African. I've seen a lot of shops come and go over the years for for ebooks in particular, um, and this includes take a lot actually. Um, where the amount of effort it, it takes to get listed and the amount of potential sales you'll get, in, in my eyes, aren't worth it when compared with Amazon, which services everyone. Um, so okay. aside from, aside from um, Amazon, uh, what I recommend is for shops like Google, for shops like Apple, for shops like Barnes & Noble, uh, yeah, Smashwords is an option. So I am figured out I can read the questions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what do you... Oh, Eugene, what are you doing? Anyway, um, so, so yes, there are several shops out there, but instead of getting listed in every single shop, um, go through a Smashwords or a draft to digital website, which is one website that'll take your book and scatter it to several different locations um, through one platform. So, so, yeah, it's always a combination of either Amazon only or it's Amazon and a draft to digital Smashwords to get your book far and wide. Okay. Cool. Maybe I um, just have a short question and then something entrepreneurship-wise that I want to swap it to. Uh, firstly, we've got quite a few of our guys in our mastermind group um, that's in Cape Town. Um, do you guys have offices in Cape Town as well? Can they pop past the office? Absolutely. Yeah, so... so I'm actually sitting right now in our new office space uh, that we got at the end of last year. And yeah. so we have offices just off Long Street. So people can get in touch with me and I'll direct them further from there. But essentially, we have offices just off Long Street, uh, which is kind of the heart of the CBD in Cape Town. And uh, yeah, we'd love to kind of... So I've touched on quite a few topics that have, you know, big, uh, you know, uh, large amounts of information behind them. Um, so, so I think any one of those topics I can expand upon, whether it's in person or in another session. Um, can I just answer two questions quickly that your, your people are asking in the chat? Go for it. Um, so the one, question is, is, the one question is regarding fonts. Um, and the thing with eBooks and what font you should be using is 
the e-reading device will choose the font for you. You don't have a choice. With a print okay. book, you can set an exact font. But with an e-book, I tell my Kindle I want every e-book to open inside Bookily. So with an e-book, you stick to a simple Arial, Garamond, whatever the case is, because whoever buys your book, their device will interpret what fonts it should be using. But for print, you can be exact about the font. Very important, make sure you have commercial rights for the font. So just because you find it inside Microsoft Word or you find it online does not mean you're allowed to use it. Be very oh. sure about that. Um, and then one of the questions is going to be how to get paid from Amazon. And so all I want your, uh, your viewers to know is to go to Payoneer. So it's P-A-Y-O-N-E-E-R. Um, and that's an online service that Amazon will pay to directly and that South African authors can apply for. And uh, essentially every now and again, you just do a withdrawal from the Payoneer account in the US uh, and you can pull the money locally to whatever bank account you have here. Okay. Cool, I'll to do the chat box. End of um, our session for today, end of our time today, David, was awesome. For all the guys that's in our mastermind group, um, I'll be down. So I'm actually going to go visit Dave around about the 25th of Feb. Um, oh. So I'll be down in Cape Town. We can, I oh, didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just pop into the office, eh? Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Um, so, yeah, if you guys are there, we can arrange a meetup. And then um, there was one other thing. Oh, and the other thing is go check out if you do want to publish your ebook, go check out Dave's website. So the new one is okay. myebook.online. Willie really popped it in the comments. Um, and also then share it in our group. So it's also there. So you can do the publishing for you. And that's the last thing about being on the business show and being part of EHQs. You get connections to amazing entrepreneurs and people that can help you scale your business. Dave and me. And, and, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and me. <laughs> you don't talk about Eugene, eh? <laughs> cool, Dave. Thanks so much for your time. And everyone that's uh, rocked up for the show, without you, there can't be no show. But I hope you've learned at least one thing today. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next week. Keep tight, everyone. Oh, yes. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs>